Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Austin Williams. I am currently at Xianjiao Tong Liverpool University in Suzhou in China. It's late at night here, so good morning to you all and thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this prestigious conference. Uh, this paper is Understanding Sustainability, which is really trying to understand the differences in conceptualization of the idea of sustainability and sustainable development in China and the UK, hopefully to try to get a grasp of the fact that these things often mean different things to different people in different contexts. We have those of you who may have been to China yourselves may know that the way that the word sustainability and sustainable development is used in China is very different to the way that it's used in the UK and the West uh, and vice versa. So we need to maybe get a better handle on the way these things are used. So the survey itself comprised 321 students in China and 115 in the UK. Uh, predominantly the differentials are because Chinese students are very adept at getting back when asked, whereas the UK students were a little bit cautious and uh, many didn't reply to request. The study is a questionnaire analysis which was carried out face-to-face uh, -face in some instances and online uh, and can uses the students of architecture as the frame of reference. Why students of architecture? Well, predominantly um, Sustainability within the discourse of architecture is mainstream in some respects. Eco-architecture, green architecture, carbon reduction architecture is the norm in the way that it's being discussed over the last 15 years or so in the West. And buildings themselves are deemed to be responsible for upwards of 30 to 35 percent of carbon emissions. So within the architectural frame of reference, um, environmentalism is well discussed and sustainability itself has become something of a narrative, a mantra even. Uh, and so this is why we see architecture students as being a very useful benchmark for this discourse. In terms of sustainability itself, uh, it's very big business. There are a number of um, sustainability consultants who maybe because nothing much is being built in the West are coming to China. Uh, and I think this is one of the drivers for trying to understand what they might mean when they insist on sustainability and what Chinese people might understand by it. Uh, and again, this is a this is a vice versa situation. I think maybe the, we in the West would have a better understanding of what Chinese people need if we understood the language subtleties and the differences of interpretation. In the same way as uh, Universitas 21 statement asks for a unity of purpose, a clarity of purpose in the use of words and phrases and on the, the drive towards sustainability. So we need to re really understand what we're talking about across borders. So let me just put some perspective on it. Uh, I'll just use the 1960s as a useful benchmark. Um, Rachel Carson, 1963, her book Silent Spring set the agenda, which takes a look at man as part of nature. Whereas you can take a look at the same period within China, Chairman Mao's statement, man must overcome nature. Uh, this for me uh, is a simple and maybe a cheap shot, but it's really serves to show that there is a very clear distinction historically in what uh, these two countries meant by humanity and its role in nature either being part of it or subservient to it in many respects uh, or overcoming it and defeating it. Are we speaking the same language when we have eco cities in the west on the left hand side in Britain in Cornwall southwest of England uh, this kind of parochial uh, romantic vision of England uh, of maybe 400 small houses with a much more traditional uh, small-scale two-story uh, typology in green fields, the rolling hills, 
Uh, whereas on the right-hand side, something which might be anathema to the way that an environmentalist might see eco-cities. Uh, this is the car-free city in Chengdu, uh, in Sichuan, by Smith and Gill, uh, which is a mega-city. Uh, again, this contradicts in some ways the way that we might see small-scale localized production in the UK as reflecting on sustainability. So, since China is plotting to build 20 cities a year in the next 15 years or so, of which around about 20% are deemed to be eco-cities, this should be cause for concern, cause for inquiry as to what it is that they mean, Chinese people mean, and what we mean, UK people. In terms of the content, uh, the sustainability discourse in the UK focuses in, um, in many regards on carbon emissions and consumption. This is a discourse which permeates the European dialogue on sustainability and in America, the policy of limits to growth, whereas in many ways the defining feature of Chinese sustainability has been increased growth, healthy growth, sustained growth. Uh, again, this goes, I think, to the heart of the way that there's a difference of opinion between what is meant by these things that limits to growth, as the Club of Rome's statement um, uh, it has been around for 40 years in the, in the West, uh, whereas the idea of growth as a positive thing in and, so, in and of its own terms in China is uh, fundamentally important. So this research was carried out online in 2013, looking at newly arrived first-year undergraduates. That is because such is the dominance of the discourse of sustainability within architecture, especially in the West, uh, that I wanted to try to avoid any uh, internal undue influence on their perceptions if they were there for more than maybe one or two weeks. So this is done within Freshers' Week, the early weeks of their semester before they become uh, indoctrinated or they become exposed too much to the way that it's being interpreted within the official channels so we get a reasonably honest perception of the way they understand it from their exposure to the media and to the discourse itself. In terms of um, the translation uh, from English into Chinese, admittedly this was an English survey, but in some ways we considered that to translate it would actually bring translational um, uh, assumptions into the survey that might actually um, uh, colour the results uh, in an equal and opposite manner. So we wanted to keep it uh, fair and open, we left it English and we used this survey within an English-speaking Chinese university. So, uh, is sustainability the most important issue for architecture? Uh, the first question, 61% of UK respondents said yes, but 80%, four-fifths, of Chinese people said yes. In some ways this challenged our basic assumptions in as much as we assumed from what I've shown of the history of China that many Chinese people would not buy into sustainability as much as they do. Um, so this was an interesting start which tended to challenge the way that we thought this survey might go. In terms of our architects helping or harming society, again this phrase harming society needs to be kind of um, drill down a little bit more, needs to be explored, but it is part of the way that it's phrased within architectural community, if you like, harming, having a detrimental impact on society. It comes from the Brundtland um, uh, definitions. So are they harming society? I suppose the interesting fact of this is that 28% of Chinese respondents didn't say they were helping. 15% they were harming, 13% uh, didn't have an opinion or were undecided. Uh, so 67% of architecture students uh, thought that architects are helping, but upwards of 30% maybe aren't so sure. Should we build more or fewer buildings? Uh, One-fifth of UK respondents want to build fewer buildings. Interesting in as much as the UK has the lowest construction figures of housing, especially since the Second World War. So building too much isn't really a phenomenon that you would ascribe to the British condition. 60% of Chinese respondents would prefer fewer buildings. Maybe, and again, this is um, part of the next phase of the research to really try to understand 
some of the motivations for these uh, responses, but 60% would prefer fewer buildings or don't share, share an opinion on having more. Should we build more or fewer cities? Uh, one third, one third in the UK say yes and no, say we should have more or less. Again, uh, no city has been built in the UK for more than a generation since the mid 70s. So uh, it's an interesting uh, reflection on the ambition to build any cities at all within the UK. Whereas in China, maybe the high percentage of people saying they, they need to be fewer buildings, 60% of uh, respondents want fewer, uh, basically maybe reflect on the pace of change within China, the, the rapidity of urban development within China is definitely something of a cause for concern. Which two words would you use to describe the future? Well, an, a series of words were offered uh, to choose from. 14% equate the future with happiness, contrasting with just 4% of the UK. 35% of Chinese equate the future with hopefulness, rather than 6% in the UK. That's not to suggest that 94% of UK respondents think the future is hopeless, but uh, the tone of the positive uh, responses from China, China was significant in many respects. What word represents the main concerns of sustainability? Uh, again, uh, we, you can uh, peruse the graph uh, in the uh, document at your leisure, but obviously issues like sea level rises, uh, climate change, global warming, etc. are common. The uh, differences are interesting. One fifth, 20% of UK respondents were concerned with overpopulation, uh, whereas one tenth of Chinese students were concerned. Uh, China, the most populated country on earth, uh, seems to have little uh, or, or much less uh, concern or worry about overpopulation. The issue of consumption and consumerism when lumped together one third of UK respondents think that they are a problem or, or the main concerns to be dealt with by sustainability, whereas in China, consumerism rates just 3%. Consumerism is a great driver of Chinese economic growth, after all. What is the most sustainable country? Again, you can peruse this in the graphs in your document. Uh, if I move on to the next slide, what is the least sustainable country? Uh, it's interesting. China is considered to be the least sustainable by 22% of the UK and almost a third of Chinese themselves. Um, in terms of whether China is considered to be the most sustainable, 3% of the UK and 7% of Chinese thought that it was. So the choices are within the UK, the most sustainable country is Sweden. And if you lump together Scandinavian and Nordic countries, you get 42%. Uh, if you look at China, the most sustainable country is Japan, a country which maybe we in the UK or in the West wouldn't really consider, and in fact doesn't figure at all in UK responses on more sustainable. In terms of least sustainable, uh, the UK choose America, uh, and with China a close second. Uh, whereas China chooses China as the least sustainable country, one third of all respondents. What is the most sustainable material? You can see from the UK, timber figures very highly as the most sustainable material. But let me move on to the second graph, where in China, timber is the least sustainable material. And in some ways, this exemplifies part of the interpretive discrepancy between the UK and China, inasmuch as the history of China as one of agricultural and industrial devastation of forests within the heartlands of China, the, um, the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution where agriculture was decimated in many, many respects means that timber is a little bit more respected as a growth material than as something to be used, uh, used and abused. So timber is much more seen by many people as a material to be protected rather than used. So, in terms of conclusions, very quickly, I think the model here could be developed and refined, uh, undoubtedly, um, to kind of uh, drill down a little further into some of these results. But I think it can be used as a practical way to really assess what sustainability consultants themselves and what we as practitioners 
might assume to be common currency across borders and be a little bit more circumspect in the way that we use it. I think it goes some way to opening up a critical investigation of, the, of a global meaning, if any exists, of sustainability, but also to be a little bit more um, uh, reflective and reflexive of the way that we use these terms in the future. That's all from me. Thank you very much indeed for listening. I hope I'm back online and will take any questions. Thank you.